Welcome to our special coverage of the monetary policy that's going to be announced by the Reserve Bank in about 15 minutes. The policy comes in the backdrop of great deal of global tumult after the Fed hiked by about 50 to 75 basis points its peak rate hike indication. Uh, the dot chart indicated the Fed peak rate may end at uh, 4.62, definitely above 4.5. Uh, will that have a bearing? We've seen huge reverses on the rupee. But on the eve of the policy itself, the rupee is somewhat stronger. That's because of a lower than expected current account deficit and a certain peaking off of the dollar as well. So is the worst of the mayhem over in good global financial markets? As well, on the bond front, the borrowing program is a little smaller than what the market was prepared for. The market was prepared for $6 trillion. It's effectively, if you take away the green bonds, at 5.76 lakh crore. Uh, nevertheless, it's not showing up in uh, you know, lower bond yields. Uh, bond prices are still a little under pressure. Uh, the 50 basis point hike appears to have been factored in. Uh, let me welcome my co-anchor Ritu, who's joining from the studio, the CNBC TV in Mumbai studio, and our guests, Parul Mittal Sena, Lakshmi Ayer of Kotak, uh, Kaushik Das, the economist from Deutsche Bank, and Shoguta Bhattacharya, the economist from Axis Bank. Uh, Ritu, first over to you. Hmm. Uh, the key things that the market has told you already. Well, Lata, there is already a wide consensus around a 50 basis point high because, you know, most of the people we polled argue there's no real reason to RBI, uh, for RBI to go for token rate cuts at this point of time. The peak repo rates are seen at anywhere between 6.25 to 6.5% as per our respondents. On inflation, not much change is expected from the 6.7% forecast uh, for the current year. But on GDP, which is currently pegged at 7.2% for FI23, it could be revised a tad lower to around 7%, especially after the first quarter numbers that we saw that were far behind what the C uh, RBI had estimated. Uh, as far as the stance is concerned, uh, most, uh, you know, the street is kind of divided between uh, retaining the stance at withdrawal of accommodation or changing it to neutral. Some are even expecting a tinkering in the wording of the stance while it is retained. But besides this, uh, any comments at all on liquidity, which has run into deficit recently, uh, any comments at all, uh, you know, on uh, more steps to attract dollar inflows to stabilize the currency, those are some of the things that the markets will watch out for. Oh, oh absolutely. Liquidity is in deficit. Does the RBI provide any comfort that every time you slip into deficit, uh, we will be there to provide adequate liquidity? Will they say that we want the repo to be the operational rate, but not just yet? Uh, I guess that would be very important uh, uh, for the market to hear out. But let us hear it from the experts. Uh, uh, two ladies and two gentlemen ready with us. Uh, Lakshmi, let me start with you. What will you actually watch out for? Hi, uh, Monica. Uh, I think uh, uh, Ritu and you articulated it quite well. Uh, the expectation... Uh, among other things, of course, uh, being the rate hike, clearly being one of them, is going to be uh, what is the narrative that is going to accompany this uh, uh, rate decision. That's number one. Uh, most importantly, uh, the focus is going to be on the rupee and the depleting reserves. Uh, are we in a situation to do something extra? Are we prepared to do something extra? It's not necessary that we will see something targeted at uh, consoling the rupee today itself. But if that comes, it's fantastic. So I think these are going to be the key watch out factors. Uh, another thing is, uh, given the global uh, headwinds, are we going to see some small tweaks on the GDP growth forecast? Uh, inflation, I, I, we, we think, can still remain where it is, uh, given the soft commodity prices. So I think these are some of the key things, uh, also given the fact that markets have already discounted half percent uh, rate hike uh, as, as we speak right now. Okay. All right. Thanks for that, Lakshmi. Time for bitting. Come again. Uh, Shogato, good morning. What would you watch out for? Good morning, Lata. Uh, so, obviously, I mean, uh, I, I think uh, Ritu has sum summarized this so well. Uh, I, I was also leaning towards a 50, uh, but after yesterday's results, uh, the, the Q1 CAD numbers, um, I'm, I'm not so sure. I mean, so anyway, as we say, 35 to 50, uh, depending on their own internal results, etc. I was leaning towards a 50 as a small premium for a currency defense. Uh, I think the stance will be, yeah, because now we are approaching uh, neutral. So even if we get a 35 or a 50, uh, so with a presumed uh, chalked in 6.5% uh, neutral rate, uh, a terminal rate, not a neutral, terminal rate of 6.5%, so 
once we are approaching this, uh, might we move to a neutral stance at, at this point in time? So that's another factor that will be very, very important. Uh, so liquidity conditions being what they are, I, I think uh, we've seen that uh, short-term market rates um, have been near the MSF level rather than the repo rate level. So that's probably yet one more signal of a liquidity tightening squeeze to defend the rupee. So whether, whether that uh, is changed at all or not. Uh, and generally, I mean, uh, what passes, I mean, you know, despite governor saying uh, that liquidity, uh, that, that forward guidance has become more important in this global turmoil, as you pointed out, I mean, you know, what, what kind of uh, statement signals are is the, is the MPC going to uh, provide for further uh, notices? And lastly, the currency, of course, um, uh, you would have noticed that in the FIMDA speech, uh, governor actually mentioned something other than the controlling volatility, uh, managing expectations in the rupee. So what uh, we might see in terms of that is, is something that we will watch out. That's a broad uh, summary of, okay. of uh, each. Okay, okay. Well, I think, uh, Sagado, not much time now, so I'll get the others in. Uh, uh, Parul, you know, if it indeed changes to neutral uh, from a, a withdrawal of accommodation, how will the market read it? Exactly what are the words or numbers you'll watch out for? So on the stance, I think uh, the market consensus is for a 50 basis points hike. So we will really keenly watch out for the stance the, and the wording changes there. Uh, on the neutral stance, if they just leave it at neutral, I think it will be a confusing signal for the market because in substance, withdrawing accommodation can be more can be interpreted as more hawkish than just a neutral stance. Neutral stance may indicate that we've achieved the rate or the uh, liquidity balance that we wanted to achieve in the economy. While what we think is required and RBI may want to indicate is that they want to move towards tightening. Uh, and uh, on the liquidity front also that they may be more comfortable with liquidity deficit from the liquidity surplus that they've been operating in. So um, uh, we are actually watching out for either neutral stance with the tightening bias or in fact, uh, just a tightening stance directly, which will be uh, which will move the market a lot more. But that is a possibility given uh, how inflation, how specifically the food inflation expectations are deteriorating uh, in India. Fair point. Uh, Kaushik, you want to react to that? Uh, neutral stance will actually be seen as dovish, uh, whereas if they say neutral with the tightening, uh, the market will get the message better. Your thoughts on stance? Uh, before I come to the stance, uh, we are all going with 50 basis points. <clears throat> but I'll not be surprised if RBI does a 60 basis points and just round off the repo rate to 6%. And there's hardly any difference between 590 and 6. So if RBI has to give a little bit of hawkish twist given what's happening globally, I think they can go for 60 basis points, which uh, Mr. Jain Verma has been asking for some time. So you can go to 6%. And you know, then kind of indicate what they want to do going forward. On the stance, I agree with uh, Parul. Uh, see, the problem is that the MCC has remit over only the rate-related stance. So if they say neutral, what happens is that neutral means that you can hike, you can pause, and you can even cut. That's the meaning of neutral. So the dovish people in the market would probably interpret it in a dovish way if neutral were to be used. I would be in favor of you know probably using a term like calibrated tightening because that is unambiguous that RBI either will pause or hike, and which is realistic in this current posture. But if you consider the stance from a liquidity point of view, not just rate point of view, then you can call it neutral, because I would assume that RBI will not want to keep the MIBOR or the call money rate perennially at the MSF rate, and probably would do term repo auctions to bring the you know uh, repo rate and MIBOR rate together. So if the fiber and the call money rate start hugging the repo rate over a period of time, then they can call neutral from a liquidity stance point of view, but not from the rates point of view. The problem is the NPC members only have remit over talking about the stance in terms of rates. And if they use neutral, that can be interpreted by some part of the market as Davish, what Parul was mentioning, or could confuse the market. The other thing to watch out for would be, uh, you know, they have given inflation forecast only till April, June in the last policy, which was 5%. Now they'll probably give inflation forecast for July, September uh, of next year. And my guess is that it will be higher at 5.5%. So whatever, you know, the real policy rate that you need to think of, you have to think of in terms of the average for FY24 or you can say July, September, not just April, June. So if that number comes at five and a half and you add 100 basis points, 
positive real rate on top of that, your terminal repo rate ideally should go to 6.5%. But even if it goes to 6.5%, uh, remember that the Fed is going to hike till 5% uh, terminal Fed funds rate. And the differential between the two will come down to 150 basis points, which is the lowest in the last 20 years. Hmm. This is not just for India. This is happening across the globe and Asia. Yeah. But that can have consequences for the rupee. So I would also look forward to what they say about the rupee, given that RBI has let rupee go beyond 80 and it has gone close to 82. All right. Not many are expecting much on the rupee. Of course, uh, RBI will maintain that it does not uh, find a level. It will only look to stabilize. But uh, uh, Mr. Sogata Bhattacharya, besides these headline numbers on repo and macros, what else would you be watching out for, um, especially on the liquidity front? And uh, where do you see the terminal repo rate uh, quickly before we, uh, you know, Toss over to the governor in a couple of minutes. So uh, terminal repo rate, uh, taking your second question, uh, uh, 6.5, as I mentioned, I think that's more or less emerging as a consensus number, uh, given the RBI analytics on what, where the neutral rate is and what uh, the cycle would, would uh, suggest. So that's the terminal rate. Uh, in terms of the rupee, again, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're not likely to say anything very much directly. They never do. Uh, but there was a subtle change of language in the governor's speech, as I mentioned, uh, managing expectations, not just managing volatility. Uh, so the, what they do on the rupee will have to be uh, figured out implicitly from the other steps, uh, the SDRP steps, the other other uh, the forward guidance, etc. In the in the thing that it will be the one that uh, mm. uh, gets a signal on, on their thinking of them. Lakshmi, what kind of repurposing in policy priorities are you going? Are you expecting this time around? A lot has changed since the last policy, especially on the global front, would those dominate rather than the domestic factors where inflation is no longer seen as the biggest concern? Uh, growth does seem to be stabilizing. There could be a downward revision, uh, a minor one from RBI. Uh, yes, Ritu, I think uh, it is the global factors which will have to hawk center stage. There isn't too much uh, in terms of adversity which has, uh, you know, uh, got uh, or, or has emanated between the last policy and this policy domestically. Uh, so I think it's going to be largely focused on the uh, uh, global scenario. It, it's still a little bit of a fluid situation and uh, there are multiple confluences happening uh, with the combination of BOE, uh, ECB and the U.S. Uh, acting in uh, very different and very directions, and of course, not to mention Japan and China. So I think it would be lesser about uh, domestic, uh, you know, developments, and more to ponder about how do you really tackle this. Of course, the first quarter BOP balance of payments was a little bit of a surprise, now, but I think that apart, uh, those those are positive factors. So how do you really navigate this global scenario and be ready to act? I think that preparedness quotient is what the markets will be looking for 50 60 or you know a, a shade lower than that uh, is broadly in the prices whether it's the bond yields or it's interest rate cost curve as we speak okay well uh, we have to note that uh, the rbi will have to bring down the growth forecast because their earlier forecast for q1 was 16.2 uh, and what they actually got was 13.8 so even arithmetically, they have to adjust it lower. Uh, if they say 7% or a 6 handle, one shouldn't be alarmed because they're only arithmetically adjusting for a lower than expected first quarter number. One has to watch out for that. But I think what uh, Kaushik was pointing out in terms of inflation is very important. Now we will get one more quarter of uh, inflation forecast. We have their Q1 forecast for next year, which is at 5%. They will now give us the Q2. And if that is anything more than 5 then that could be an indication that the Reserve Bank will need to up its peak rate from what it thought earlier. Uh, well, I don't know if the governor is uh, about to start, but until he starts, Parul, uh, what would you... Uh, is the governor there? Uh, Parul, you, would you want to make a last comment? Uh, a last yes, comment so, uh, on like to... uh, uh, what you are expecting in terms of this inflation forecast? So uh, we are watching out for the commentary on inflation. We think that food inflation concerns have risen uh, fr from the month of August and continued into the month of September. Cereals inflation has come up in a big way, uh, and that has the potential to start taking food inflation higher in India. And if that sustains over the next few months, uh, we see the inflation forecast at risk. So we'll watch out for how much importance uh, the governor, the MPC, gives to the domestic food inflation uh, situation, which is arising. 
uh, we think the 5.8 percent Q4 uh, forecast. We have kept it on uh, 30th of September.